Hey, Katie Girls, it's Sunday, June 2nd, 2024, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time. We are here for All Star Season 9, Episode 1 of COLDR. For those of you that don't know, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever fabulous co host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. And did you miss us? Because we miss you. We've been gone for a little bit. And if you're uh, aware of the regular show, you kind of know a little bit of what's happened. But All Star Season 9 is here, and uh, we're a little tardy to the party, but I think you'll forgive. We're going to discuss the very first four episodes of the new season. Mm -hmm. Drag Queens Save the World. Maybe. The Paintball. Snatch Game of Love. And Smoking Hot Firefighter Makeovers. The episode that just aired, what, not even 48 hours ago. So Right. So yeah, we're going to get into that. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Um, usual format, you know, uh, Damon and I are twinsies today with our matching shirts because, you know, consent is our foreplay, baby. That's how that works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so with that being said, do we want to jump right in? Let's do this shit. Okay. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. For charity. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know which one, but I'm going with Shane. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. I love how, like, that was a big thing in the first one or two episodes. Like, they kept putting, for charity, like, like, Vanjie talked about it a lot. Like, they had to just keep putting that out there. And then, like, I haven't heard anything really much since. Yeah, I may may talk about that later. Okay. So, Mm -hmm. with that being said, uh, we're going to get pedal to the metal. This is, like, just our overall thoughts in terms of these first four episodes things that stood out to us in three main areas for those of you that aren't familiar the first area is serves so these are like the positive things that we enjoyed about this particular show that like we wanted to highlight um the swerves would be the things that are just not good like if this was an actual race maybe there is debris or a hazard on the raceway like you should have avoided it i don't know why you did that and then nerve, this is the one that gets a little interesting. It can be spicy in some opinions. It can either be really, really good, like, girl, you have so much goddamn nerve doing that, or nerve, like, wow, like that's mm-hmm. that was that was a choice. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. So that being said, what do we get into serves, David? What do you what what was what was the thing that you thought was a real serve in the in this particular set of episodes? So of the four, one of the things that just popped mostly in my mind, I am giving my serves to the Liberace Times Two. Mm, um, yes. So this was a rather interesting situation. We find out that both Chanel and Nina West have brought Liberace to do for the. Um, snatch game, mm-hmm. which, you know, everyone knows it's going to be a thing that's going to happen. So, yeah, everyone brings a character or two, blah, 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 blah. And the thing I'm, the reason I'm giving this my serves is because they both did something very fun and unique and interesting with the character, mm-hmm. uh, with the person, and they both did really well. I feel kind of with the episode, Nina did just a, a bit better than, um, Chanel, but they both both brought something fun to it, and it was a lot more fun. And with Chanel, as we know, this is probably her very first Snatch Game. Right, because I believe in the storyline, they gave a little herstory and said that Snatch Game came about in season two. Right. And Chanel is the primo numero uno queen as apparently she gets like chastised for in a a ribbing kind of shady way she will always let you know that she was the very first queen ever on rupaul's drag race because she was the first queen to ever walk in the room um so yeah like so here's the thing you and i know this we've been doing this for years now you don't Mm -hmm. come with just one no you come with more than one and yeah. you know production knows this. They have to vet them all ahead of time. Right. And that's what I think was the best part. Okay. Either production chose not to gift it, like chose not to interfere, or 
they knew what they could do with it, which was essentially mm. put one in one group and one in another. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I think that's probably why it ended up happening. I do think it's great that neither one, there wasn't a fight per se. They didn't like argue. It wasn't the Gia Gun Trinity like doing, um, oh, Caitlyn Jenner. Mm. Eh, whatever. Like that was All Stars a few years back. Right. Where they kind of had, you know, that's where. She has her like, what you're gonna do ain't necessarily, you know, what you want to do ain't necessarily what you're gonna do kind of line. But, right. but either way, I just I I do think that it was a really great choice. It was a good choice, and I think it really went well. Um, I found myself laughing more at Nina's than I did at Chanel's, mm-hmm. and I think Chanel went, unfortunately, because I given what we've seen of Chanel over the years, I think Chanel went more literal than. Right. Like I think that was, I thought that was the good comparative between them because Chanel took it on as an, as a male impersonation challenge. Mm -hmm. Like she needs to embody Liberace. She needs to look like Liberace. She did a prosthetic Mm -hmm. nose. Like, I mean, she, Mm -hmm. she took it so like, um, detail oriented in that direction and it kind of showed as in yeah. she looked the part mm-hmm. and she sounded funny but she mm-hmm. wasn't like improv like yeah bouncy fun nina on the other hand looked like fat liberace and i'm <laughs> only saying that because her face was so round in that wig and i don't know uh-huh. what could have been done the whole time I'm looking at her, and then I get like why there was the reference to that she looked like you know Grandpa Munster, because I think that wig didn't quite do her any favors. Um, mm-hmm. And yet, like Nina also like had an extravagant outfit, had a prop, and like as someone else gave feedback, and maybe it was Bussy Queen, it kind of made a comment about, or maybe it was Willem. One someone said Nina West was giving a lot of Paul Lind from mm. like from Hollywood Squares. Yeah. Like that kind of like, ha 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 ha, like, you know, hyper kind of like funny um, personality, which was an interesting comparative (laughs) against Chanel. Um, And I know that like Rue really loved Nina getting body with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, you know, turning everything into like a double entendre kind of joke. And that stuff, and and really delivering it as the yuck yuck kind of you know yeah, aspect. Very of much things. so. So yeah, I hear you. I did. I did think that was kind of wild when they were like, "You're doing Liberace? No, I'm doing Liberace." Like, what are we gonna do about this? And like, you know, right. I don't know if Nina was acting or not for the cameras because Nina seemed to be the one that was really wound up about this whole like yeah double it, aspect. And that was the one I was, I thought that Nina was going to back down because that's very much Nina, like the congenial, mm-hmm. like lovey dovey, like everyone, you know, be happy kind of person. So I thought she would back down and maybe go to another character. But I do, I, that's why I kind of, I feel like I'm glad that they, they, neither one did. Right. Because we got a very unique spectrum. Now, yes, you're kind of directly comparing the two, but it is what it is. Right. I think it would have been more problematic if they had them both on the same team. God bless it. Because that would have been then the dueling Liberacis. Yes. And I think if production felt that both of them could have ha- could have handled it, they would have yeah. done it. Yeah, I agree. But I think they made the right call and was like, okay, we put one in each group. You each get a Liberace. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah go from exactly. There. Each group gets a Liberace. Agreed. Gary, what about you? Um, I have to give a serve. Plas- plastique's moving art. And the reason why I'm calling it moving art is, like, if if there is a queen who came to slay, Plastique is one of the three, I think, in this season that is, like, spent the coin, has the skills, and is going to do everything within their power outside of anything that they have a deficiency in to, to win win air quotes win you know get all the money for their charity (laughs) um because in a way there's a part of me that's like she don't need to do this like 
you know, but she is. So she's serving it. Yeah. And God. when it came to the paintball yeah. and she was making her outfit, production intentionally gobsmacked us by not showing anything of what she was working on. I, I don't recall really seeing anything other than she was painting something at one point. It was obviously the cherry blossom, like, you know, opera coat, yeah. like ridiculous yeah. kind of thing. Um, but you had no idea. And literally she turned the corner and my jaw dropped. And I was like, holy fuck. And I was like, God damn. Like if I was a queen in that room, I would have been like, I'm going home. Like, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'll see you later. Like, I'll write the check to my own charity. Like, you know. <laughs> imagine being imagine being Nina in that moment. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm sure exactly. we'll talk about that. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I, I agree with you 100%. I think it was so beautiful. And not just that look, but all of the looks that I have seen her in for the most part have been mm. – just spectacular i mean like, that that asian um goddess deity fox tail oh, the, the, the the kitsune yeah right like that's like kind of furry-esque like with the tatas because mm -hmm. that was the tatas and tail like i think runway yeah. like she turned the corner and i was like god damn like she is just <laughs> slaying i mean she's Fe freddy kruegering these motherfuckers all over the place she's just like Whoosh! yes that would be a tail and two titties that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. that was yeah wild um, wild like just and the thing is so with the art piece like what blew me away about it was i was like oh fuck you bitch because it's simple it's a mm -hmm. white tube dress. My God. Like, there's not that right. much to it. Like, you can stitch that shit up in a couple of minutes. And then she mm -hmm. took the time to paint it and to bejewel it. And all she had to do was do outlining. Yeah. Boobs, pubic area, ass. Do you know what I mean? Like, she just yeah. had to do a little bit of shadowing. And I think, honestly, the coat what probably took the most time just because yeah. it was so voluminous and you had to, like, make it kind of lay right and then paint the shit yeah. out of it. Even though that didn't have a ton of paint on it. It was – it was. yeah. Damn. I think she did what I feel was the appropriate amount of, like, I'm not going to change this too much, mm -hmm. but what I'm what, what I'm going to give you – is going to wow you. So I'm not going to take right. like several like and like Brady and, and all of this shit. Like I'm not going to do all of that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to present something very wonderful and beautiful and um, cult right. culture specific. And well, yeah, just... and it, and it's funny because it's almost like thinking back to the most recent season. It's like she's a blend of Q and Safira, like mm -hmm. like someone who is time managed knows their resources and are like really artistically skilled like and knows how to pull that stuff together and i was mm -hmm. just really kind of super impressed by that and then yeah. i was just listening to something maybe it was race chaser i thought someone had made reference that like what people didn't know about plastique before she got or maybe it was um kimchi and trixie from the most recent pit stop, there was a comment about how Plastique was known before she got on Drag Race for being a queen that is very crafty, that like that mm. that took a ton of time to make her stuff um, right. and that she had done, I think, hair and like, you know, some outfits and things like that. So she kind of already had the skills before she showed up um, on the scene, which I thought was very interesting. Anyway, so, yeah. yeah. So I just like I just. I needed to give that recognition because I was like, you know, it's it's not just one episode, even though I focused on one. I'm like, just every episode. She's just, yeah, she's just doing she's it. She's been slaying. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Let's move on to swerves. Ooh. <laughs> David, what, what what's your swerve for? Oh, girl. Oh. So, um, Cleopatra? Really, girl? Really? I think you mean really? Vanjie on Halloween. I think you just mean Vanjie. Like, well, I, I say just, no, no, no. I say Vanjie on Halloween because she looked the part. Like, she had the, the outfit on. And to yeah. me, that's like what you would wear when you go out to a Halloween party. I mean, fair. But the personality was, was totally Vanjie. <laughs> yeah. I feel like... Now, so, okay. 
So when you do this thing, like picking people who we modern wouldn't, we wouldn't know their personality, we wouldn't know their mannerisms, their 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 um, speech, etc. It's it's a little like it's a little easier to kind of go however you go with it. Right. Vanji just did Vanji with the Cleopatra wig on. Like that's right. all that was. Right. And that's why I'm giving us my little swerve here because it felt like you could like to me that's not the essence of Snatch Game and especially Snatch Game of Love. And it, I don't want to say it irked me. No, I'll say that it irked me that. We're here in this moment. We're all stars, and this is what you do. Mm. Like, just it, it just felt cheap. Like, if I'm gonna do this, like I'm just gonna like well, I'll just pick a random I'll pick a random figure from history, right? And just be me. Like that's what it felt like to me. Well, let's say this, as it was recently discussed. I think by Bussy Queen about the most recent episode because Bussy Queen was talking about um, they had done a video and they talked about how they need eliminations to happen in all stars. And they, mm-hmm. and they circled back around on that in their most recent video from the past day, it re, not re explaining, but like trying to make more succinct their point. Cause they feel like people didn't get it from the earlier video. And their thing was when there isn't consequence for action, this is what you get. Right. And so I'm parlaying that onto what you're saying as Vanji had nothing to lose. Right. So since Vanji had nothing to lose and wasn't going to get eliminated and it was for charity, why should she put in extra effort? That's fair. That's and, fair. And, and there is a risk, like you said, like you get to take something that is unknown and do do it your own way. But mm-hmm. this is not like Trinity the Tuck doing Satan. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's the yeah. thing where I feel like it's it's totally acceptable to say that Vanji kind of phoned it in. It was yeah. just like, I'm going to put on an outfit and that's about it. Like, she didn't really bring a lot to the character. No. In, especially, like, in terms of a personality or a portrayal or reactions. Yeah. So, yeah, there's that. It just, it again, like, it felt like it felt like Vanji in a Cleopatra wig. Mm. Yeah. Do you know? It was a cute wig, but it felt like. That's all it was. Yeah, and but all she had to do was like borrow it from one of the girls over at Luxor for a show, like you know, and just. <laughs> but she didn't even know. God bless her. <laughs> she she's even done, she even does like she's been she did the Drag Race show in in Vegas and whatever. Anyway, just <laughs> nobody's hiring her to like you know win a you know a um uh you know recognition for her prowess and knowledge let's mm. just put it that way mm. yeah okay gary what about oh yeah <laughs> well it just needs to be said nina's paintball yeah her runway god bless her heart she's funny but she's not that sure like is. she's not that creative when it comes to things and it was it was it was a disaster um nina i just felt sure so bad funny. for her yeah. Because, like, luckily, and I say luckily, she had that tie dye corset. Uh huh. That was, like, very colorful and bright that she wore over top of the dress. Like, I questioned that when she turned the corner. The hair was cute. Don't get me wrong. Like, that, like, that cartoon, two dimensional kind of aspect, like that wig. I was like, okay, that's cute. But that was the thing. Like, that was about the best part. Like, it yeah. just wasn't, it just wasn't good like and i just don't know if again like back to what i was just saying a moment ago like if sometimes the queens are not that concerned because they're like i'm getting paid a little bit of money for this do you know what i mean like i'm raising money for charity and there's no real negative downside other than your reputation um yeah (laughs) so i was like girl girl yeah like I I would have been happier with that dress outfit if she had decided to go a tie dye like aspect to it. Just the whole dress was somehow tie dyed, um, mm-hmm. or if you like, I don't know, like airbrushed it. Like I have this vision of like a like an ombre rainbow swirl pattern 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just like something that gave it gave it movement without it actually having any movement because, like, you know. Anyways, yeah. it was. I'm yeah. looking at a picture of it now, and I just am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I mean, again, like it just. It just occurred yeah. to me what she could have done if she knew she was going to use that hair. She could have done pointillism. Like she could have done yeah. colored dots to make yeah. a pattern like and gradiated it from like black and white up through color, like with rainbow or something. Do you know what I mean? And just like yeah. started at the bottom and worked its way up to the top or I don't know. Just yeah. to, like just to something, give it something needs to something needed to happen. Other and than it what did. did. Right. Right. Agreed. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's such, oh, God. Agreed. Oh, anyway. All right, That's moving on. <laughs> nerve. What do you give a nerve for? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. going back to, to Smash Game, um, I'm going to give some some love and, and affection to Miss Angeria Paris Van Michaels and her... Um, I was so about to say Marla Maples, and that's not who I mean. Marla Gibbs, look. Mm -hmm. um, I loved it. I loved her timing. I loved her choices. I loved the way she kind of went with it. Is it kind of an exaggerated version of Angeria? Probably a little bit. It was very much a Southern Belle as opposed to, I think, like going with Marla being from sort of like Chicago mm -hmm. area. But right. um, it was funny. It was, again, great, perfect timing. She did really good. Um, I am a little surprised she didn't win. It was just on a little. Um, trying to remember who won. Oh, it's over here. Boop, boop, boop. Who did win that? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 They, they gave it to Nina and Gottmik, didn't they? Right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And don't get me wrong. Nina was amazing. Gottmik was amazing um given what she did i think that was a really that was a very like hit, either hit it out of the park choice or it was going to fall flat and she hit it out of the park um mm -hmm. because again you have to do something with this and her doing her doing pal from lassie which by the way pal was a dude um just putting it out there <laughs> right, right. Well, maybe that's also part of the subtext of the reason that Gottmik picked it. Right. Is that Lassie was considered a good female dog, and right. yet it was played by a male, and hence, you know, the art of drag, yeah. the other yeah. gender, like, you know, representation, <laughs> and, and plus Scott might being trans. Like, yeah, I think that yeah. kind of adds up. Yeah, there's a lot of late. There could be potential ladies if we get intellectual with it. But, like, right. Right. yeah, I just, I I felt like it, I feel like Angeria's Miss Marla had Rue and everyone else laughing a lot more. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I just... Yeah, it was great. It yeah, was no, great. I I agree. She she really gave a performance. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I believe she was blocked in that episode. Yes, she was blocked, so she couldn't get a beautiful beautiful benefactress badge. Um, <laughs> I saw that I wrote, Gary. <laughs> I gotta call it something. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, it was it was good. I really appreciate it. I'm really happy that. Angeria, because she knew, even though she knew she couldn't um, get the badge, she still went right one hundred percent with it. Right, she dedicated herself to it. Yes, agreed. Ah, Gary. Oh, yes, Gary. What about you? Yes. All right. So here's the thing. I know. Um, I didn't know this until I watched Bussy Queen's recent video. That mm -hmm. apparently this runway presentation has fired up like conservative social media. Oh, um, and I didn't know that was a thing because obviously I'm not following that or paying attention to it. True um, that. But so Gottmik's most recent runway. What was the what was the theme? Because I am totally drawing a blank. 
Um, on... That was the that was the tale into Titty. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. So Godmick decides to do an art expression like runway, and like it's so great. well refined. I mean, Godmick never kind of missteps on a well thought out like look in no. an outfit. So, and we all know that Gottmik and Violet Chachki are like besties. So, you know, Violet had a hand in the selection, like feedback concepts. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying that Violet gave ideas to Gottmik. I'm just saying, like, Gottmik probably had these ideas and then ran them past Violet and was like, I'm thinking of this. What do you think about that? Blah, 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 blah. Because one of the things that got commented on was how the skirt from the outfit was the exact color of like, doctor scrubs right like that you would wear in a surgery like if you know that like the, the that's the kind of the, the subtextual meaning that's not even being talked about in the presentation of the double uh mastectomy and like the detail of like the crystal blood drops where the scars are the clear baggy with the rhinestoned like like removed breasts like i just it was it was astounding like Mm -hmm. if you thought that got mixed little black dress was like provocative from their season maybe you ain't seen nothing like this particular outfit was breathtaking and not breathtaking in like a oh my god like i felt that way about the art like Mm-hmm. Like, you know, runway when they came out in the ridiculously bejeweled scream walking art like gown. Piece. Yeah. Like that when she turned the corner and I was like, OK, OK, fine. Uh, whatever. Like you got it. <laughs> like, I mean, like, like, like I say that in a teasing kind of exasperation, like you just know sometimes when you see a look, you're like, well, fuck everybody. Like, you know, and I felt that was that the thing with Gottmik. And then this time, like, I don't know if I quite felt exactly that way, but it was just like awe inspiring to see something so personal, you know, of their journey get interpreted into the exactly. art of drag and being presented. And I was just like, well, shit, like, like there's nothing that could be said. Like, and it was sort of a real, like, um, tongue in cheek shiv in the side of the judges, because there's a part of me that's like, I dare you. I dare you to say something about this. Like, what are you going to say? You're going to look like an ass. Like there's nothing mm-hmm. you can do other than to probably praise it. Right. Not that it didn't deserve praise, but it was like, I could see a queen doing this on a regular season. And I feel like the judges reward, like you said earlier, if you're going to go for it, you've got to knock it out. Right. So you can't half ass it. And I feel like this is very much that like going whole haul hog, like looking at it. I'm looking at a picture. Mm-hmm. Like Go to the, go to drag race wiki, by the way, just really amazing resource. Uh, um, looking at the picture that they're using the the way everything sort of works and the idea behind this is you have to think about just what went into this and while overall if you look at it it's kind of like a simple look it is so many layers and so complex right um the fact that the the tail of her tail is the ponytail that's the long ass ponytail like well yeah. and i thought that was interesting because i didn't pick up on that i mm-hmm. i interpreted tail as t a l e as in to True. tell the tale of my journey right so and that- and i thought that that was an interesting way to do that like that you double mm-hmm. entendre part of the theme mm-hmm. you know in yeah, but I do. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I love like looking at this again, the idea behind this, the probably craftsmanship that went into this. I believe she got Mick mentioned that these are cast of their arms. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the freaky deek of that aspect of the outfit. She turned the corner and they were jiggling and moving yeah. around. And that 
creeped me the f out for about a <laughs> half a minute. I was like, "What in the hell is going on?" And, yeah. I, and then she says that she cast her arms in silicone and like you know had them like airbrush painted, blah blah blah, and the scalpel, the whole bit. And I was just like, yeah. "This is some insane level of dedication to the look." Yeah. To like. To, and in essence, on a meta way to talk about, like, self-mutilization in in the sake of, like, the form of the artwork of drag yeah. to be yourself, to be your own identity. Like, it's just – it's so wild, so wild. And I was like, that is some goddamn nerve. Like, yeah, because I think yeah. a great many queens, no shade, all tea, go on the show and they – they have such great aspirations mm -hmm. that, that that's that's what it is it's aspirations <laughs> like it just it doesn't and it doesn't translate and yeah. you know some people are really successful with it you know mm -hmm. um but usually i think the people that are successful are the ones that have a team yeah That's and okay. I'm looking at my phone, something on my phone. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. I think I think that's yeah. what yeah. works really well is when you have a, like a collective group think and like you can brainstorm and bounce ideas and like get that collective like feedback without it mm -hmm. um, being all on you. And and don't get me wrong, like there are some really talented queens. I think Q is one of them. Like so yeah. talented. Yeah. And there's a part of me, as I just said, that I was like, yeah, but how much? How much more could those be looks be if there was a team? Don't get me wrong. I think they'd all have to be on Q's level. Like for the detail and for the like the creativity and the artistry, but that could be a significant powerhouse. Anyways, that's them that's my thoughts. Yep. All right, you ready to move on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so these are the snaps and the eye rolls, a.k.a. the hits and the misses from these particular episodes. Um, <laughs> we talk about them being the highs and the lows of the episodes. I'm just so amused because I saw what you put down for snaps um, for, the, for this extra recognition. So, David, why don't you go ahead and <laughs> sure. who are you give it snaps to? Um, I'm giving snaps to um, Meow Meow Mix and Angelique. Um, this most recent challenge, the makeover challenge, mm -hmm. um, Georges and Plastique got, um, oh, his name just left my head. Thank you for notes. Um, Andre, um, as their, their, um, firefighter mm -hmm. and, um, Andre like was ready, willing and able to do whatever the fuck he needed to do literally shaved his eyebrows off for the sake of this, you know, makeup over challenge and got to give props to that. First of all, like that dedication and willingness to just like be, do whatever. But then when he came, when she, when Angelique came on stage, <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't tell me that that's not someone that has done drag before. Okay, let's talk about that. Like of <laughs> all the of all the queens, the queens that got made over, Angelique mm -hmm. hands down is a goddamn drag queen. Like yes. is a drag queen, is a beautiful drag queen, is like yes. like totally package presentable, could probably compete in a in a in a bar like type. Right. Like yeah. unbelievable. Like she turned the yeah. corner and I was like, who the fuck that bitch? <laughs> like I honestly right? like for the briefest second forgot that that was not like a contestant like that was wild yeah. um, because most and of the time when you have a makeover the guys do look a little brick you know like they yeah. just yeah 
It's not, yeah. it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. Of all the seasons you want to be made over on, it's probably in All Stars and it's probably with this cast because they got some goddamn killer, like, paint queens in this bunch to, like, really fix your mug. That's true. And that's sort of what I got here. And I just, I just, I loved it. I loved their look. I loved what they were going for. They were very much, to me, they hit the challenge. Meow, mm-hmm. meow, miss. They hit the challenge. They looked like a girl group. They were cohesive. And they had someone in Angelique that really, like, like I said, was willing and able to do whatever it took and was able to, like, move and get around and, again, like, didn't look clunky or this is never, I'm so not doing this, I'm not used to doing this, or I have any trepidation. They were on it. Right. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I'm conflicted about how this last episode turned out. I am too. Because... While Roxy Andrews's group, the Hosers, I think, with hoses, hoses, right, hosers, whatever, they all <laughs> hose. Um, while they looked great, and Roxy okay. absolutely deserves the kudos for the recognition of the three outfits. It was cohesive; like they had a whole thing going on, um, except for the hair. Uh, like. I'm just calling it out. You got two girls with yeah. a middle part and the third girl, you can't give her a middle part. What is up with that? What is up with that? I'm just saying. Like, come on. If y'all had different hair, I wouldn't have cared. But you decided to make you know two of what? you have the same hair and then the and then you give the firemen the big, like, drag, you know, kind of hair without the part. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I I was genuinely thinking, and I'm surprised they didn't. I would have loved it if they had all, like, taken off their wigs because that's Roxy's thing like the whole like if they had Girl. gone to the front and then just like taken off a wig and had a different wig underneath I would have died like <laughs> you're not wrong you're not wrong if they had if they had pulled that as a stunt in the midst of their like performing and they all mm-hmm. took off wigs and then revealed another wig underneath yes that would have that would have been something else yeah. but anyways yeah. um yeah I mean like it was very interesting to see these particular groups and their and their comparison, but I hear you. The only thing about Angelique, and this is a criticism, is girl them panties. Like they just didn't fit. Mm. There was there was a thing going on, and I don't know. Like I'm guessing that outfit got made in the workroom, like to somehow no. bridge together the other two. No, I think I feel like she had like. Either Plastique or Georgia's had the outfit because I'm trying to go through the episode and I feel like I remember seeing the green. Mm. And yeah, I feel like. Because I know Roxy like had an outfit and brought extra fabric and they made fun of that. Mm -hmm. But that's how she was able to make the third outfit and make it all work for the three of them. And then ultimately what they pulled out from Nina's stuff, they ended up using from what I can tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was sort of a surprise, but it worked. And mm-hmm. so, you know what I mean? So with this one, yeah. I was like, like, I get it. Like, yeah, Georges didn't have like the the fur booty thing. And so like that kind of stood out that she didn't have the matching footwear, quote unquote, yeah. um, style. And yet on the other side of it, like Georges and Angelique had the straps like the mm-hmm. whole like kind of strappy kind of look with the yeah. dangle, like but plastic didn't like you know so like I could easily see where they were throwing things across the three bodies to make the cohesive mm-hmm. like girl group thing. I agree with Bussy that like, um, Michelle Visage was obviously like smoking it or she had an edible because she was like you you don't look like a girl group and I was like what the fuck are you talking about like of course they look like a girl group like they're like fucking there's power girl. Well, there's red, green, and blue. Like, and like, yeah, it's not all identical. The only thing that I do have a slight criticism about is I wish that Plastique had black in her outfit to go mm-hmm. with Angelique and to go with Georges a little bit. Like, I think that would have been a little bit better. 
Um, yeah. It became kind of obvious to me that Georges had – or not Georges. Plastique had that outfit because her name written across her chest was, like, really well done. And I think that was something she brought. And then that's what they decided yeah. to carry over to the other two girls. So they made, like, Georges and they made, you know, um, uh, Angelique's name. So, yeah. No, yeah, no, no I mean – by all means, they they deserve it. I really do kind of feel like it could have gone to them mm-hmm. for the win. Just saying. Yeah. But that's not part of the story yeah. they're telling. No. No, it's not. <sighs> I'm sure we're going to get to that in a minute. What about you? <laughs> um, I want to give snaps for changing up the challenges. I've been yeah. a little surprised, and I want to give some recognition to production as, as heavy-handed, heavy-handed, as I think they're being this season. I appreciate that they're kind of mixing things up a little bit. So mm-hmm. like they like at the top of this episode, they're like, go ahead and get paired up. And we just had that whole discussion about like the clicks versus like alliances thing. And then Rue made them give their extra badge away at the top of the episode. I thought that was going to mm-hmm. happen on the runway. Like mm-hmm. when they got to judging, like I thought that was going to be a, a – that's where I thought the drama was going to be is before everybody – like before you find out who the winners are and they give the badges, like that's when you give the badges. And instead Ruth's like, nope, you do it. Good morning. Hope you like your breakfast. Give out a badge. And I was just like, oh, shit. Um, so I appreciated that this was the makeover challenge, but it was also the girl group challenge and it was the lyric writing with the choreo. Mm-hmm. Like they really kind of mashed a lot of that stuff up. Right. Um, and so I, I like that they're, they're, they're changing it a little bit here and there to, you know, make, put some twists on things yeah, and yeah, do yeah. it, do it a little different. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I, I, I liked that aspect, um, of it. So I just wanted to give like recognition that I appreciate that I haven't been bored. Mm so to speak. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. I think the the thing that usually happens and I feel like it happened with Seven when it was all winners, there's there's going to have to be some sort of drama or else we're not going to be as invested. And this time around, there's not really been drama per se, but I do feel that there has been a change, a shift to kind of make this engaging right yeah without well, it being yeah yeah i i heard something interesting i think it was raja was talking about the all winter season and how production still told the story and the mm. thing that a lot of the queens i think were not prepared for when it aired was how much they cut out all the negative mm-hmm. like from the sounds of it, there was clap back to the judges. There was judges' actual critiques. There was stuff that got said in the workroom. And they just left it all on the cutting room floor. And very much put it forward as the nicest season that's ever existed. Yeah. And I got the impression that the queens were a little caught off guard by that because they didn't think that was going to be the case. And they weren't no. demanding that. So yeah. I'm bringing that up because I feel like they they do what they want no matter how you try to play or what you do true. in front of the camera um Very true. so i think mm. i think so far this season the queens have been doing pretty good like with that understanding and i do definitely feel that we're getting the camaraderie like we're all here just here to have fun and yeah i feel like there's these manufactured moments i think nina is totally playing into it like like a part of me is like how meta is she being like is she fully aware of the camera recording aspect and so she's not honestly as anxious and wound up about the production as she's making it out to be because she knows that makes good tv do you know what i mean because i feel like some of the other queens are being a little reserved and a little like careful and i think nina's just like putting it all out there and doesn't really care and so i'm like all right are you really putting it all out there and don't really care or are you doing that because it's on camera Mm. do you know what i mean like are are you are you thinking of it beyond what what it is going to end up being i don't know and it could come with i mean it could also come with age like 
And the reason I bring that up is because of the age difference, like, you know, putting the doc together and stuff, you know, the youngest amongst them is Georges at 23 and then both Chanel and Nina are 44. Right. So Nina and Chanel are old enough to be Georges's parents. <laughs> Just saying. I mean, truth. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. That was something I wanted to look at. I hadn't looked at that in a while. Um, I was just trying to see who, I mean, I, obviously, um, Chanel was on season one. I'm just, there was some stuff, season one, season five, and then, yeah, I figured, I thought so. So you've got Chanel in season one, Roxy in season five, all the rest are 10 and later. Oh, Yeah. 10, 11, and, 11, 11, mm -hmm. 13, yeah. 14, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then to kind of add on to that, Roxy and Chanel are the only two that did, have already done an All-Stars before. So. Correct. Yeah. It just, it again, these are little things that I'm, I'm, I was noticing as we were, you talked about age. I was like, wow, that is true. And then, and then I started thinking about the, the Queens and I'm like, I don't think any of them are from, I mean, other than the two that I would assume, none of them are from earlier seasons. So these most recent queen, the, these queens have been, are from the last five, six years. Right. So interesting. Anywho, that being said. All right, let's move on to eye rolls. <laughs> Damon, what are you giving eye rolls for? So... All right, y'all. Um, no elimination. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've been on the fence about this for a while. I get that we're doing this for charity, and that's probably the only reason why this is going to be a thing. And maybe, more than likely, that is how we have the queens agree to do this, right? Like, Yes, we're going to do it for charity, but you better not fucking eliminate us so that we can make the most for our charities. And that's the only thing I can think of in regards to this. Mm. I feel like, given that we just had an All Stars where, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, every queen was so tired of the shit, they were about to like drop, jump ship, like literally. Mm. <laughs> and we had one that did. Um, to now we're going to make this all lovey-dovey like you know no one's getting eliminated and it's for charity like that's that's what we're that's the plan and as we kind of been talking about and hinting at it leaves a lot to be a little bit to be desired mm. the queens don't necessarily have to take risks some queens are don't get me wrong some queens are um but they don't necessarily have to because realistically, no one's going home. So the only risk is if you make the risk and you get the reward. Well, uh, here's what I was just thinking about is what if they changed the, the whole system? And yeah, it's for charity and there are no eliminations, but there are consequences. And mm. so let's say every week you have the opportunity to earn money for your charity. You also have the opportunity to earn no money for your charity. Mm. So what, and, and the reason I say it that way is I guess I have to explain it because I'm like, well, technically that is the reality right now. So what I mean is <laughs> there are eight queens competing and there are, let's say, every queen, every queen but the bottom two are guaranteed $1,000 for their charity. Right. And then if you're in the top two, you automatically get $5,000 more for your charity. And if you win the lip sync, you get an additional $5,000 for charity. Do you see what I mean? Like, so there's yeah. there's sort of a, a, a weighted system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you if you don't do well, then you don't really make much money for your charity, which will start to look bad after a while. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would make sense. I feel like there needs to be some sort of stakes and that's where we're we're kind of missing it from mm -hmm. these non-elimination seasons there's no 
stakes. There's no risk. I mean, no offense. I love you, Nina. I really, really do. But ma'am, that, that dress, that paintball dress was, was tragic. It was awful. Yeah. 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 It, it was, it was so bad. Yeah. So, so bad. And I feel like, and I know that sounds bad of me, but that feels like you shouldn't get rewarded for that. You know, that to me was an eliminating dress. Like I'm just point blank period. Right. Vanity's Cleopatra was an eliminating performance. Like I just. Or this. <laughs> okay. So how about this? Instead of the Ruby snippers, really? What if you replace that with, if you end up in the bottom, you get, you get, uh, banned from earning the badge the next week. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to a queen picking it, it's now done by judging and elimination or, uh, and, and top bottom, like right, the right. bottom two. Yeah. I can, I can see that being a thing. And that would be, and again, it would give again the queen some stakes to make something happen right to do either make the risk or do the risk right now where we're at it sort of become eh. right i you think know, I, th I think what you and i are agreeing on and saying is like we don't feel that there's the investment of the of the commitment mm -hmm. to win yeah some sometimes it feels a little like they're just going through the motions because they know they're not going to get sent home yeah and yeah, I'm like, like mm, no okay. offense, like plastique, your, your, your Angie, not Angie, whatever. Whoever oh, you're uh, Ali Wong. Ali Wong. Yeah, that, that, mm, girl. Uh, <laughs> girl, no. Considering what we know of you and what we've seen of you, that was awful. Right. Like, that would have been like Veggie and, and you, those were my bottom two. Like, if this were had been an elimination style, that one in particular, those two would have been in the bottom two. Those two would have been lip sticky for their life, and one of them would have been going home. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fair. Anywho, but you know, that's just me. I just, I, I, I'm not, I don't hate the non-elimination seasons, but what I feel is the difference here is with the all winners, they had an opportunity to like show all that they can do and boy did they show us all that they can do right whereas this time around it feels in some ways kind of phoned in and no you know actually all shade um it it, it it's not the greatest moment and mm. and i feel like and I think you're going to get into this production is going to make do the thing that they always do. Every queen's going to win something. Every queen's going to get a beautiful, bit of fast, fast. Every queen's going to win a seat, an episode in some way, shape or form, because that would not be right. Great. I don't think, um, I don't know if it's going to be all of them. Like we just had a tie this most recent episode, but I feel like there's going to be a winner and each queen of the eight is going to win. Like, I feel like Chanel is going to win at some point. Right. Uh, but again. Right. Yeah. No, that makes anyway. Sense. Gary, how about you? Um, I just said, I mean, we've been kind of referencing it. The heavy hand of production. Um, I mean, we knew going into this season that that was going to be a case, especially since there's no eliminations. They've got to be able to pull the string somehow to make things go the way they want. Mm -hmm. We kind of talked about it um, in various aspects. As, you know, Snatch Game of Love. I agree. I think Bussy Queen was like the Marla impersonation should have been with Nina for Liberace. While I don't want to take away from what Got Mick did with the pal as Lassie thing and that amazing mug that she painted and like, mm -hmm. like it was, it was so good. But at the same time, I was like, it's just not delivering at a 10. It's like a nine. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's that. Um, and then with the most recent episode, the smoking hot firefighter makeovers, like we just were talking about like Roxy winning like, so here's the thing I think that bothered me is that they decided to award the two queens in the pair 
mm-hmm. as a duo. And I know that that's right, but there's a part of me that feels like, but what if you hadn't? What if you had mm-hmm. picked like specific queens from different groups? Do you know what I mean? Like that right. might have really shook things up. Yeah. More so if you picked like three. You know what I mean? And been like, yeah. instead of two winners, there's three winners. Now, granted, three queens lip syncing gets a little messy on the stage. But, um, you know, like, I just think there was different ways to go about it. And, uh, you know, and then uh, and then this. And the winner is. We have a tie. Tie. Oh, my God. What do you mean tie? Preach, Noxima. What you mean, Ty? What is this baloney? We get to the lip sync, and then Rue's like, you know what? I think you both deserve recognition of the win on the lip sync. Really? Really? Do you really feel that way, Rue? Because I don't think it was the best of lip syncs out there that it deserved a tie. I'm just saying. Like, they both presented, and it was different styles. And if I had to give it to somebody, I would have given it to Roxy because Vanjie was just like jumping all over the place and, and, and did not know the words. Play the tape. Go back and watch. So many times production showed her not moving her mouth to the words. So I was expecting Roxy to win. And Rue's like, I think you both entertained me. You both win. And I was like, say what? I was like, oh, so the two queens who just got awarded bonus badges Mm -hmm. went from zero to two in the in one episode. So now they are Uh front runners out of the blue. Next to Gottmik. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to be uh vulnerable and controversial and brave. Vanjie ain't going to win another yeah, right. badge for the rest of this <laughs> season, I don't think. <laughs> so again, this is where I think you're saying like production's heavy hand and I feel that's very true. I feel that's very accurate. I think I think accurate. they totally selected and and gamed the whole episode. Like the whole point of the episode, and I just want to like iterate some of the things that were happening. Vanjie has indicated that she hadn't won anything at all in her season. Ever. She was on the show, ever. That was something that was kind of plopped out there. You didn't have to put both, that in the, in the edit. No. Both Vanjie and Roxy wanted to say, like they said several times, like since they got badges, they wanted to earn badges. They wanted to rightfully earn a badge. Blah, blah, blah. Like, that was the whole point, like, of them going, like, doing what they're doing. We're going to do this so that we can earn a badge. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. And then we get what we got, and we had Miss Valerie Valentine, and God love her, but bit, no. She was all right. She's she's a dude in a dress. Yeah. Move, moves around. like moves like a dude in a dress. Just saying. Right. Exactly. That's the point. And I feel like there was so much better. There was much better choices and and things. The only thing that that they had going for them was that um, Roxy made these outfits, and they were they had a very cohesive same look kind of thing right. for the most part. That's the only thing they had really going for them. Mm-hmm. So again, whatever. It just it it. I get the story. I get it, but it felt very forced. Yeah. And then you didn't you didn't give them ten thousand each. You they had to split the prize. Oh, that part. When that got announced, I was like, "Ooh, why are we being cheap on the charity all of a sudden?" We gave away nearly half a half a million dollars last season. Oh, but when it comes to charity, we go we go split it up. Yeah. Okay. okay. It just felt again. It just felt it felt again. There was no need for it. I would have preferred. Again, I think if I think Roxy should have won. 
if they if they are going to go this route, just give it to Roxy. Give her to have her give the ten thousand, um, and and leave it at that. Or if you're going to go this route and you're going to have them tie and all this bullshit, then have them both give ten thousand. Or just, if you really want a production moment, give Roxy the win and the ten thousand, and then have Roxy give some of her money to Vanjie's charity. That part. Because none, because we'd have nothing to say. We'd have nothing to say in this moment. We wouldn't be like talking our lips, you know, smacking away about this bullshit of production. If that's really what had happened, if they let Roxy have the win and then Roxy turns around in a gracious queen moment is like, you know what? I'm going to give half of my winnings to my sister for her charity because we were a team. Right, right, right. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I would have been like, fuck you, Roxy. Like, because I would have been annoyed at the at the at the political gamesmanship and the and like that move. I would have been like, talk about a goddamn pageant move. Fuck you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that would have been that would have been an excellent gameplay in that moment to be like, I'm going to give some of the money also to that charity because I believe in it. I mean, that look part. at what happened. Like in the, the firefighters, they each got money for their charity. And then one of them's like, you know what? I'm going to give my money to your charity because I believe in that. And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah, that was cute. That was very sweet. Yeah. All right. So that kind of brings us to the end of this particular episode. Uh, I know we we did not cover a lot. Um, I know we hardly talked about Drag Queen Save the World the very first episode, probably because it was forgetful. Um, And, you know, a lot happened in these particular episodes. Um, And the the I will say the untucked has been fun and has been Mm -hmm. pleasant. Um, The the drag queens playing Pictionary. Like, <laughs> girl, like, I would prefer to watch that every week. Like, I just thought that was fun to watch them kiki and try to figure out what the fuck they were doing. Um, So, yeah, like, I mean, it's it's been good. Uh, In theory, I believe you and I talked about this. It hasn't been confirmed anywhere other than, like, that one website that actually let us good on the last season. There's going to be 12 mm-hmm. episodes this season. Right. Now there's been some discussion. People think there's only going to be eight or ten. I'm trusting our source from before. There's going to be twelve. By right. the way, the source is not Reddit, so y'all calm down. Um, if there's going to be twelve, we're already a third of the way through the season, so this is moving quick. Um, to be fair, it was the first time you and I are recapping. So, so yeah, yeah. So go, just to give a a juncture in. All Stars Seven, which is kind of a similar format, non elimination mm-hmm. on Paramount Plus. There were twelve episodes, right? So just just yeah. to eight so contestants, I, twelve episodes. I think that's fair. Which means ultimately we'll we'll have this through all of Pride season. We'll have it through all of month of June right now, and then we'll have it through July, which I think is fine. Um, yeah. I'm still curious to see what happens. Willem had spilled tea prior to this airing the season. Uh, because Alaska had talked about like nobody leaves the show and uh, and William said that's not true and mm. that caused a little scuttlebutt and Alaska was like it's a non-elimination season and Willem kind of doubled down and was like I said what I said like was was basically of the mindset of like which me I read that as oh so a queen did not get eliminated but a queen chooses to leave mm. or I guess the other thing could be something happens and they have to right. leave Right. So we'll see if that becomes a future drama to play out in the next month or so. But anyways, we would be interested to know what you think. So there's plenty of ways to get in touch with us. You can go to visit our blog, CubsOutloud.com. You can leave a comment on a post there. You can send us an email, CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can also give us a ring-a-ding. Pick up the phone. You can call, leave a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Um, we're basically on social media outlets, kind of the main ones. If you type in Cubs Out Loud as one word. If you want to join the Telegram uh, entourage chat for COLDR, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen COLDR. You can find out about our regular show when we're going to be live, like later today. Uh, for the regular show, you can go to tinyurl.com slash a calendar hyphen C O L. If you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. You can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and you can get some merch. We got a bunch of things there that are all sorts of stuff for Cubs Out Loud and Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. So yes, Damon and I are twinning today with our matching t-shirts for Consent is My Foreplay. This is in the drag pride uh, flag colors, in case you didn't know. We also have like lovely uh, coffee mugs, soup bowls. We got 
purse bags. We got all sorts of different stuff. Handy towels. Oh. <laughs> you name it. Um, we've got all sorts of things with the logos, both the drag race and the regular one on there. You can do. You can also go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can join our wonderful patrons over there for a dollar or more a month and help support us in keeping the lights on, um, help upgrade equipment when uh, shit breaks, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also just make a one-time donation. You go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud and you can leave us a one-time tip. We will gladly uh, take it. Um, I mean, you can make more than one donation. That's okay too. I mean, yeah. Uh, so with that, you could pretty much find us anywhere that you listen to your podcasts online. See you well, uh, drag race is a separate audio feed, uh, podcast, by the way. Um, it also has a separate playlist or, uh, partition does a playlist on YouTube. If you want to watch the video of our fabulous faces, as we talk about the outfits and the things that go on, Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they go? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter slash X. Um, our uh, pup umber79 on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. For safe for work stuff, you can see me as DMA Gamer79 on X and TikTok. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. Um, I do have a Twitter account that's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-73-D-R-A-G. So it's Gabriel73Drag. Just to keep all the, the Drag Race stuff uh, kind of fandom and things at bay because I don't want to get spoiled. Because, um, you know, that's the thing that people like to do. Uh, but with that being said, uh, we're going to wrap it up. We should be back in a couple of weeks to talk about the next couple episodes of All-Star Season 9. And uh, until then, we look forward to uh, seeing what's going to come out of the next few episodes of the, the mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. See who else wins some money for charity, right? Right. Because <laughs> it's for charity. <laughs> so we'll see you later, queens. <laughs> Bye.